Okay, uh, shall we go to the trade that the Leafs made? Which the one? many trades. Ah, uh, we're gonna get to them all. Okay. Oh God, Kyle Dubas, he's been a busy boy. So we'll get to the the, the the first big one. The Toronto Maple Leafs have acquired Jacob McCabe, Sam Lafferty, and some some conditional pick, but no one cares. Uh, in exchange, they send Pavel Gogolov, mm-hmm. Gogolov, Gogolov. Joey Anderson, but the big thing is a 2026 second and a conditional 2025 first. There's some salary retention. Listen, basically all these trades, a few don't, but most of the big trades have salary retention. I'm just not going to bore the listeners with the details. On top of that, that is not, the least we're not done. They trade Rasmus Sandin to the Washington Capitals in exchange for Habs legend Eric Gustafson. Uh, they also received the 2023 first rounder from Washington. That was Boston's from the Dmitry Orlov trade. They also then moved Pierre Engvall to the Islanders for a third round pick. Uh, that's a 2024 one. They send a 2023 third to the Canucks and get Luke Shen. So He's legend. So exactly, and he actually is. I think well, not literally, but uh, Toronto's but basically, favorite son returns. I love it. So, so Sandine, Engvall out, Luke Shen, Eric Gustafs, and Jake McCabe, Sam Lafferty in. We can get to each of them in their own rights, but just, I mean, Alex, I got to ask you, man, as all these trades were happening, how were you feeling? I was just trying to read a book. What, what were you reading? Um, I was reading, it's called uh, Atomic Habits. It's just about like how to pick up good habits and stuff like that. Is it a good I book? Just, yeah. I, I was trying to read this as I'm trying to pick up the habit of reading every day. And um, I couldn't s- stop. I just, every time I looked at my phone, there was something else. I was like, just leave me alone, please. Were you in so, a meeting when the McCabe trade when happened? When the McCabe trade happened, I was in a meeting. Yeah, I was literally talking in the middle of a meeting. And I stopped. And I got go, their guy, so, guys. I go, sorry. I go, I go, sorry. I'm like, the Leafs just made a trade. I'm going to put my phone down and I will continue talking. Um, so that's the, the, that's what I was doing the last two days. Okay. So Alex, um, obviously we, when I mentioned about bringing Shannon out, initially there was a thing of, are they really upgrades? How do you feel? And we'll start with the D that they brought it. Sandine's a whole other 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 conversation because that that was out of left field. However, oh, upon seeing what some Leafs fans said, I'm not entirely surprised. But we'll get to that in a second because there was smoke. Anyway, yeah, there was a lot. <laughs> um, so the defensive core is at a point where you add Luke Shen, you add Jake McCabe. I don't think they're going to be offensive dynamos, but they face punch big boys. Um. I mean, like, it, let's go. I just, I want to, let's look at the McCabe trade for a second. Cause I think it's a, to me, it's a really good deal considering what the asking price was. And I forgot to mention McCabe has term and I should have mentioned that. Yeah. McCabe yeah. has two more years left after this and he'll be, it'll be $2 million. Okay. So it's a first, a second and two guys. I, let, the two guys I'm, Joey Anderson, literally no one claimed him for free last week. He's an NHL player. He's going to be a re- good, really good bottom six player one day. And you know what? He's going to play for the Chicago Blackhawks this year for the rest of the year. Pavel, Pavel Gogolev, undrafted. Uh, I think he's he signed out of Guelph. Great um, name, by the way. Yeah, and he, and he spent the last couple of years uh, between – the AHL and the ECHL again, like what's the, if I don't know what the value is for those two players, but you've literally, you're really giving up nowhere near your top prospects with all due respect to those who two guys, you are giving up nowhere near your top prospects. And then you're giving up a first and a second. So the whole thing was that it was going to be a first for McCabe plus much more to retain. And you still got Sam Lafferty. So to mm-hmm. me, this deal is more than okay. I think if you look at the, like what it brings, I, I think the Leafs decor today looks very different than it does two days ago. I think they look, it, to me, they're a lot harder to play against than they were 
the last time this team played, frankly. They retired like mix of depth is very different now. Like yeah. What I like about McCabe is I don't think he's at the same level as Muzzin. I do think he's below that quality. Yeah. But when it comes to the price point and the age, I think it's a lot better. <laughs> like that's the role he's fitting. He's basically the new Muzzin. So Jake McCabe has my second favorite clean hit of all time. The one on line A was just God. Just what a hard yeah. hit. And it was clean, unlike half the ones that happened before we were born. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I like on. I just sorry, go ahead, Dad. Are you sure? Yeah. I was just gonna say I love the balance that we see now with the decor. Um we we we, we saw what they were able to weather when they had the injuries, but now Everyone's back. Everyone's healthy. I really like what they were able to do with everything. That there is that grit, but there's still that responsibility, like the clean hits. And it's just going to be interesting how you're going to fit everyone. I know there's probably going to be another move soon, but uh, yeah, I, yeah. I like the quality of these these defensemen, especially that they're getting. Well, I so is it is it quality or role? Because I don't mean to be rude here, but I don't really think. Luke Shen is a quality defenseman. It's just, it's, we're going to get to Juneau later. And I think the thing with Juneau is it's a role thing. Now, maybe it's the quality of the, he, he's so good at playing that specific role. But like Luke Shen is, like, let's be honest here. He's there to be a mean boy. Sure. He'd be and- a very mean boy. Okay. He, he is there to try and combat Pierre Edward Bellinar and like- Corey Perry. Don't be surprised if Luke Shen is starting game one of the playoffs. Oh, I 100% agree I'm with you. I'm not surprised. There. Yes. Like, yeah, God, no, don't no. be surprised. Like, I listen, they have on their roster right now nine NHL defensemen. If you want to include Jordy Ben, we can make that 10. Jordy Don't be surprised. Pardon? How is Jordy Ben still? Like, don't be surprised if Luke Shen starts on the third pair come playoff time. Like, sorry, Justin Hall. See you later. Like, have fun in the press box. Like, I'm starting respectfully. Unless it's the, like, uh, you're starting Luke Shen come game one against Tampa. Like, I don't, I I feel, I, I don't, to me, it's not even a question. I don't know if that's too looking no. forward. I, I, I just think, to me, your starting six is Riley Brody, yeah, McCabe, Liljegren, G- Giordano Shen. Uh, yeah, that can work. Or you switch, you go Giordano Liljegren because that's worked, and McCabe Shen. That's, like you, yes, pick, that's like you decide. Like frankly, you'd someone decide what it is. Like I, I don't that that looks to me when you say it. When I say it like that, that's a lot different than what this defensive core looked like three days ago, right? So I just feel, to me this with the defensive additions they've made, it looks like a tougher defense to play against and i think that's gonna go better for them when it comes playoff time to me i agree with that um do we want to talk about sandine now yeah i think a lot of people are trying to galaxy brain this so sandine was unhappy i think it's fair to say he wanted Mm -hmm. a bigger role in training camp there was a contract dispute um listen um I like the move for the Caps. Like I, I like having that bet on the young player. Like I, I, I really like it for them. The Leafs, I mean, they get a first rounder. They're always gonna like that. Listen, I think long term it could be a move that you regret because of the player he can turn into. We know he can be, but you can clearly see what the Leafs are trying to build in their defensive core. I think Alex, I think you mentioned this. He probably wasn't making game one of the playoffs. No, I think that's that's he, simply. I wonder if if Dubas has learned from the Kapan and Janssen stuff, and he looked at the fit, and I wonder if he sold high on Sandy, 
That's what I think. It, uh, s- and I hate it. how screw, much he got. Screw Janssen and Kapitan. They had this with the defenseman. His name is Travis Dermott. Yeah. Listen, and I'm not I'm not saying Rasmus Sandin is Travis Dermott. Rasmus Sandin is much better than Travis Dermott. In, in yep. no world, in no world was Travis Dermott ever fetching you a first round pick ever. With all due respect, what the the, the thing here is? It, it's exactly what you said, Adam. It's the he was unhappy. He what first he was he was going to get eaten alive. This is going to be a bloodbath. Frankly, this first round, every single matchup in the East is going to be a bloodbath. We'll pick up, pick a matchup: New Jersey, New York, uh, Toronto, Toronto, Tampa Bay, Boston, Pittsburgh. Like it's just going to be a bloodbath. Frank, he's a good defenseman. I just think he was going to get eaten alive. Um, they could have made this trade, I think, at any point up up until this time. The reason I think they didn't make this trade was for two reasons. Number one, does everyone remember the absolute madness of defensive injuries at the beginning of the year? You needed him to be there. Number two, in the last three days, they've acquired two more defensemen. And Jake McCabe, who's frankly taken his spot, and um, and Luke Shen, who that's just another body for him to have to battle with, essentially. That first round pick is not. Listen, I could be wrong. Come next that next episode on Sunday, we could still have this. The Leafs could still have this first round pick. I don't think they will, but I that's. I think that this galaxy braining it is way too much. He didn't want to be here. They could have. This is. Remember earlier this season, Niels Lundqvist got traded. Hell yeah. Yeah. Exact same thing. Young defenseman. Same sort of. Mar- the market was what, set for it. Wasn't going to get in the lineup. Was asked to move and got moved. Like it, this galaxy braining it is way too much. You have the example. It's right there. Listen, it, I think. Sorry, go ahead, Danny. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I kind of feel that it's just an accumulation of what we've been thinking with him is, you know, he dropped in the draft for Toronto. They traded down and got him. He was developing well. He played in the playoffs when he was very young. And I think there's just so much of those factors that a lot of fans were looking at thinking, man, like this, it was supposed to be one of your foundation guys, but... I think you still got perfect value for him. I still think that along with that value, you you do these moves to win now and to extend that window. And really, like I, I, I felt it too. When the contract uh negotiations were not going well, I think that was already that was already the sign that it wasn't gonna work out long term. Yeah, like I always thought that by the time Every like AK, okay, there was there's this time frame where like Brody's contract expires the team at the same time as like Matthews and Nylander. My always thought was that was the exact time that Lynn Green and sorry, Lily Green and Sandine were really going to step up and really going to be the center parts of that defensive work. Um, now maybe long term it's Nimala, but it's not going to be the same timeline because obviously the whole thing. What's also nice is like. Here's what's gonna happen. Alex mentioned if even if it could get traded any day now, that or it's gonna be traded and Dubis is gonna move down the draft because he, right. he loves doing that. Um, here, here's the like, again. I I like Sandy. I think he's gonna be a good player one day. Um, it's just um, it's just it's still kind of it's still a bit taken aback by it because it was just sort sure. of um, it was quiet. It was quiet. Good it just happened out of nowhere. Quiet. It did. The, the, like, here's the thing with Sandine is so Sandine and Lilligren came into the organization around the same time, relatively. They're a year apart in terms of draft class. Mm-hmm. Sandine had this quick, oh wow, like this is a guy who can come come in, and he played some NHL games in his first year, whereas Lilligren it took some time to get there. There were questions. There were questions, there were questions for questions. multiple, multiple years. 
to me, to, like at this time, it feels to me that Timothy Lilligren had surpassed Rasmus Sandin in development, in uh, how people view the defensive core. Um, they're not prospects, but how people view uh, the the younger players on this team. Like uh, to me, Timothy Lilligren had surpassed Rasmus Sandin, and I think that had started happening uh, at the end of last, towards the end of last year. Like people were pissed when Justin Hall made the lineup in games five, six, and seven um, in the playoffs. Over, yeah. Like I remember because that. he made he had a penalty. Like it, it was just the reasoning didn't make sense. Um that's what I think this is. Like this isn't there's no gala. Like I just I don't think it's necessary. They have like 10, 9 NHL defensemen. To say this is dumb, yes, in the long term, maybe. But I think so in the long term, th- yeah. But they don't care about but that right they, now. They don't care. First off, they don't care about that right now. And let's say they keep this pick. Do you know where Rasmus Sandin was picked? I was actually thinking this is probably going to be around the same range, maybe a little later. Yeah. But it was definitely the back half of the of the draft because they yeah, they moved down. Well, they suppose. moved. They moved down to get Rasmus Sandin. So I'm not saying they could keep the pick and they're going to pick another Rasmus Sandin. I'm just saying they could. It's a possibility. Like, I, it's just, I doesn't need to be galaxy brain <laughs> to me is the thing. Um, and, uh, and and good on Washington. They're yeah. going to get a young, talented. They basically could they be, get a, a, a younger Gustafson and a guy who could turn out better than Gustafson. I really like the trade for Washington, too. Yeah, As yeah. Say, you can tell. Like, Washington have to be careful that in the process of getting Ovechkin the record – that they don't completely screw themselves in the long term. That's probably why they didn't want to go long term war off. So I like what they're doing there. I like what they're doing a lot. Like yeah, they the they rearmed themselves, I think. They they didn't run on empty where there's like we're just gonna put like a depth guy in there. We're gonna get, you know, someone who has that top four potential, but he's gonna be able to get the minutes that he's wanted and maybe he does deserve in the way the core looks like right now in Washington. They used the assets. That, listen, this is Boston's pick. Right. It's going to be a late first. Yep. You use that from Dmitry Orlov, who you weren't going to get done, and you turn into an extremely young, promising defenseman. That's smart. And what they do is only giving up that first. Um, and God, God, this is in UFA, it's a bit different, is they don't pay a, a bunch of assets to pack it to get chicker in. Which again, there's more assets available for other moves in that. It's clever business by McClellan. It's clever business. Yeah, it's a good deal. Like they're getting themselves a uh, a guy who will be a good defenseman in the years in future years. It's just he's just not there yet. Do we have a passing note on Pierre Engvall? Um, unfortunate. <laughs> I don't know Great what to skater. say. Like, I. I, I I don't know a guy. Oh, uh, listen, I'm not going to say he's Fred Freddie Gauthier because that's mean. Oh yeah, no, no, God, no. that that that's mean. It's just to me, he felt like another guy who was big, and the literal and fa- factually just tall, bigger guy who just didn't, didn't use, use his it. body. Yeah, never and I think it. that's what. And I think that listen, if he was able, if he did that. Uh, we're having a different conversation about Pierre Engvall, but the issue is he didn't do that, and he was the cap casualty here in, in my eyes. Well, I think he reminded me of Kapanen in a way where, you know, great skater, good speed, but a lot of the tools that were offered to him or what he had, he never used it. Like, he would he never finish. He he never, was, yeah, he never threw he, his body around. He was much more defensively responsible than Kisberry Gavin and I will I yeah. will I, I will say <laughs> I will say 